All right, everybody, welcome back to the KSR YouTube channel. And uh, today, like you saw in the thumbnail, I'm gonna kind of give you an idea of what the plan is for the Cutlass. So we've got our lifts up and going now. At least these three work. That one, still gotta get wired up, but this one works. So we'll run it up in the area, show you what is going on underneath it, as well as give you some plans and kind of correct something that was kind of big that I forgot in uh, the first video on the Cutlass. Like it was kind of big. I don't know how I forgot it, but I'll tell you about that here in just a second, as well as give you a little bit closer look of, uh, of the car and let you know what we're gonna change and what the end goal is for the car. So stay tuned, show you what's up. All right, well you can see we've got the old hot rod up in the lift. Got my <laughs> leftover stickers from the Indy 800 on the quarter panel. Just thought that was funny. Obviously the car is going to be getting a repaint at some point, maybe a wrap because it's got pretty good bit of rust. This is actually a hole right here that you know, we bondoed up 20 years ago. Got some rust to fix there. Haven't exactly decided what we're going to do there, but since there's a body line here we've got to deal with. I've thought about cutting the drip rails off entirely. But I'm gonna have to do a little more research on that. I kind of like the way it looks with the trim on it. But I also think it might be kind of cool to do something where the drip rails are shaved off the car and looks a little different there. So the car originally did have that half vinyl top thing. So these trim pieces are kind of unique anyway. So I've got to source some different trim pieces for the car because not too many of these came with a fully hard top, I don't think. But the big thing that I forgot to talk about in the first video is I did change the engine in the car. I didn't go 11s on motor with the 260 cubic inch V8. That motor is best served as a boat anchor. It's like 4.3 liters. I think that's what 260 cubic inches works out to be. I had installed a 355 cubic inch small block Oldsmobile in the car, had factory iron heads on it that were ported, had big valves, uh, a solid flat tappet camshaft, that uh, Victor intake that we tested for Edelbrock, and you know, and all that, that's what got me down into, you know, when we first put the 350 in, it was like we were in the upper 13s, changed camshaft through the years, changed the torque converter, changed all other sorts of little things, you know, as you do to keep making a car better and better and better. And then it ended up with the car being in the mid 11s on motor, and then with a little shot of nitrous into the tens. Now this was really before drag radials were a big thing, like at least the Mickey Thompson uh, 275 drag radials. So that was on a 28105 slick and yeah, that's just what we had back then. The car wasn't as fast as it potentially could have been. The engine actually ended up in my buddy Sean's car where it went a best of 1143 after we changed a couple of things and his car was a little bit heavier than mine. So the thought was that maybe if we put the engine back in my car, probably would have gone somewhere, you know, maybe 1130s on motor, which would have been pretty cool. I actually do still have that engine. It's a part in various pieces around the shop. And maybe we chuck it back in, maybe we don't. But um, you can kind of see some of the stuff we've got in the plans for the car. It's a fiberglass rear bumper, fiberglass dash. Uh, in the fan box is the oil pan for the car which the oil pan is not going to fit inside of this notched cross member. So this bit of work here was actually done by TRZ and they prototyped their G body manual steering rack kit on my chassis. Like when I took the car apart, just didn't have the money to put it back together back then. And they were coming out with some new parts and had kind of met those guys and gotten to be good buddies with them and just loaned them the car so they could cut and modify and develop parts for it. So that was the first TRZ G-Body manual steering rack kit. And also this was the first 
this is more recent that we did this actually when we were at the old shop they're bolt-on true coilover adapter setup which uses an eyelet on the top and an eyelet down on the lower control arm instead of the the post that mounts the shock you know on the vertical eyelet and then it has a cup for the spring this is a whole lot nicer because you can take this in and out we put these on mullet and like i said this was the first car to actually get them installed and the pictures of this if you see this sticker here the pictures on their website are the ones that i took when i first installed them so the car's still kind of been in and around the scene just not in the capacity that i wanted to be but that's why it's here that's why it's in the lift so lots of different things to do actually let's take this box out we'll show you what this is here we'll raise the car up but the box back there we've got some parachutes for the car two parachutes which two parachutes are for cars that go 200 not that i think we're going to get there at least not with the small block oldsmobile because that's a whole lot of horsepower as you guys have seen with mullet now i hope to be five to six hundred pounds lighter than mullet because we're going to just go to the extreme of taking weight out of this thing make it kind of pretty kind of like max effort streetcar deal at least what i would consider max effort streetcar deal without completely hacking the car to pieces so let's raise this thing up and show you guys underneath it and show you some things that i want to redo actually before we run this thing up first thing i can show you guys that i want to redo is the mini tub job so I actually did that back in I think 2006 and they're not great they're steel they're not level with each other and they're heavy because they're steel and you can kind of see I had tacked them to the body which ruined the body work here tack welded them and then I had a body guy that said no stupid don't do that because it'll pull on the body and make the bodywork actually crack and stuff so the plan is to use some kind of urethane or some something that's soft but it's still that's going to stick the quarter panel to the wheel tub and we're going to probably do some carbon fiber tubs so that they're lightweight just like what we're going to do in spencer's car but well since we're going to have all that cut out i think i'm probably going to take all of the trunk floor out all the way down to probably where the main hoop lands and i know we need to rebuild the floor in here you can't really see it but the transmission tunnel is in real bad shape like just pitted from rust the passenger floor was rotted out because before i got this car the heater core was leaking which is a pretty common problem with a lot of older muscle cars heater core starts leaking puddles water under the carpet you don't know it's really happening you might smell it occasionally but then all of a sudden once you finally realize it the damage has already started and the floor is starting to rot out underneath your carpet so my dad and i had actually patched that at one point but it wasn't a great patch job you know just didn't have the equipment that i've got now as far as the nice welders and and nicer material so yeah you can it's kind of funny seeing some of the old stuff back here like this is where i had my fuel pump mounted back when uh, the car had a whole holly blue fuel pump on it with the carbureted 355 oldsmobile but uh, yeah it's bringing back some memories talking about this whole thing and the cage it has never been raced so this cage is something that trz and i did together and we did it down at TRZ, which there's a couple of things we want to redo, like the door bars. I think I'm gonna redo the door bars, but this cage has been built to the 25.3 spec, just like we did in the lawn dart. And uh, what else do we do 25.3? Oh, Sean's Chevy two is 25.3. Uh, Spencer's car will be 25.3. So that's legal down to six flat if it's so hold on hold on let me back this up so a 25.3 spec car can be built to where it will get a dual certification to where up to 3600 pounds the car can go 650 
and below 3,200 pounds, the car can start to six flat. Now, will I ever go that fast? Who knows? It's easy to buy power. I mean, you just gotta break out the wallet and write a big fat check to somebody like Steve Morse for one of those SMX big blocks. So I'm gonna do things the hard way with my 380 cubic inch small block Oldsmobile and see just how fast we can go with that. But, um, you know, at some point, maybe we change and put a real big motor in the car and the chassis will be okay for it. So more on that after we get this thing up in the air. You see the car has a whole ton of bars underneath it, which that's what it needs to make the 25.3 spec. Now I'm already seeing something that's gonna take a little bit of work to modify. So I have bought some replacement uh, lower control arm torque boxes, which are in this box right here to give some extra adjustability for the lower. So this is supposed to go down and replace in place of that. But uh, I'm gonna have to do something a little creative with that support there. So originally when we were building this car, we were gonna stick with the true stock suspension stuff. But a lot of places are now allowing stuff like this. And you may, uh, you may see some of these on mullet pretty soon here. I know Garrett messaged me the other day asking about what to use. So we're gonna do something with that, which I uh, have to figure out what I wanna do there because obviously it's braced really well. And also, I mean, by the looks of it, I might just have to cut all that off. Hmm. Because we're also going to be cutting out this cross member to do the upper torque box like that. So you can see there's all the holes for the uppers. And then the idea is to tie to the cage kind of like is done here. But I may have to do some cutting and splicing years ago when I notched the frame. I didn't do a very good job. I mean, it's not terrible, but this little tubular brace here, you can see, like, what in the world welding is that, Kevin? Golly, that's terrible. So, gonna come in and cut this out because with this bar in there, it doesn't need all that. Like these, the frame rails really don't do a whole lot on these cars once you add all the chassis to them. The factory frame rails, it's just the way it is. So what I will probably do is cut off the frame rail somewhere in here and then get a new rear section from another donor car and add you know add the frame rails back in so that i can meet the rules for the stock frame you know sometimes you got to go backwards before you can go forwards but there's definitely been a lot of work put into the car there's some more yeah that's not not good there's rusting this is way too low because with the car at a lowered height, it's going to hit this with the drive shaft. So that's gonna have to go. I wanna do a drive shaft, a full drive shaft tunnel, like an enclosure, which is just a whole lot safer if it ever explodes the drive shaft. I do have a carbon fiber shaft for the car, which I hope is still the right length because I've ordered up a turbo 400, like I had mentioned before. So probably what I'll end up doing is putting the nine inch rear end in the car and then using the drive shaft that I have to set the engine placement, or maybe I just end up buying a new carbon fiber drive shaft. We'll see. Kind of got the cart ahead of the horse on the drive shaft purchase, but it's the way things go sometimes. Uh, I do have to cut these out because it's supposed to have a four bolt flange instead of a two bolt flange for the transmission cross member. And uh, yeah, there's certainly a lot of work to be done. We're gonna do something 
up here with cutting out this entirely. Uh, there's a couple of different companies that sell a kit like what Mullet got installed that basically locates off of this back bucket and then comes forward and then it has tabs sticking off of it so that there's a lot more room for like large oil pans. And I have a very large uh, fabricated aluminum oil pan for my engine. So the goal is to try and make as much room as possible under the engine, makes more room for the turbo headers to come down and forward because on an Oldsmobile, the, uh, the cylinder heads, it's not quite that extreme, but the cylinder heads already angle the exhaust down at a pretty extreme angle. So the headers will go down you know where they're gonna have to come through they have to come through here somewhere so if that's out of the way then all we have to do is work around the steering shaft so that we can plumb the hot side into the turbo now it's still going to be the big single turbo somewhere mounted up here probably do a decent sized radiator off to one side i've got to play around with weight because since the car is going to be a lot lighter the weight placement is even more important because you don't want to end up with one side of the car way heavier than the other there's a lot to think about i mean yeah we could just chuck it together and wing it but i would like for the car to roll out of the shop and at least be able to run sevens pretty quickly after we get to the track now this car has actually only been 1090s on a couple of runs so to roll right out of the shop and go from tens all the way down into the sevens it's obviously a pretty lofty goal but i think we can i think we can make it happen so the plans for the rear end like i mentioned in the last video it's going to be getting a trz fabricated nine inch a different one than what i've already got upstairs which i believe that one's sold we'll see got a local buddy that uh that said he really wanted it so we'll see if he comes through on that but we're going to be doing a narrower one than i've got upstairs and also do one with the floater housing ends on it. That's something that once the car goes a certain speed and ET, you're supposed to have the floater housing ends, which basically means when you break an axle, the wheel doesn't fall off because the flange for the axle is, the flange for the wheel is not a part of the axle itself. The axle can actually slide out and the car still roll around. It's kind of like your big heavy duty truck stuff where you pop a center cap off and the axle literally just slides out of it and the car can roll around and actually it helps for when you're pushing the car around because when you've got a full spool in the car if you take the cap off and slide an axle out you're not having to fight both wheels being stuck together at the same speed because these things are a big pain in the butt to push around when the back axles are locked together so anyways like most projects you know there's some certainly some work to be done it's going to be a little interesting like how we poked the you know how we poked the rear frame rails through i want to use this cage because there's a lot of time and effort put into it but parts of it will definitely be cut out and redone it's an unfortunate part of taking so long on a project that parts of what you've done won't work as well as if we just go ahead and cut it out and fix it now it's a whole lot easier to it's a whole lot easier to get it right the first time but at least before we completely finish the project we can you know go back and fix it now before we completely assemble the car and build every accessory around the existing part of the car now so it gives you guys kind of an update on the cutlass realizing I've got a big road ahead of me. I mean, between all the other jobs, which I'm about to go jump back on one over there, that's really important that it gets done soon. This is probably a year long project, at least for me, because it's not like I just do the YouTube stuff and just do the uh, builds on my own cars. I've got a business to run. And part of that business is getting customers cars done. We've kind of been slacking on this one not really slacking we've just been busy trying to get some other stuff done and uh the big one we've got to get done next is donnie's uh donnie's mustang over there which a little over a week from now i've got to be on 
the dyno. Like from where I'm finishing this video or from when I'm filming this video, that car's got to be done and on the dyno because Donnie's got a race to make with uh, Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain Race Week, I think it is. I should remember that, but there's just so many races and I kind of get them mixed up in my head. But I know I'll be on Midwest Drags. At least that's the goal. See if uh, the El Camino gets a big block finished, installed. And uh, Cletus and I are hoping to do Midwest Drags in the El Camino. So lots of work going on. I've got to wrap this up because my job today is Donnie's Mustang and working on the engine harness. So appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. See you guys next time.